I, I do think the title somewhere I read was about forgiveness. So yeah. I want to bring that back again. Yes. And um, I shared yesterday that that was a real clear message to me. This path being about forgiveness was was what I really needed in my life. And um, learning about the idea of forgiving what never really happened and all of that. And learning about, you know, it looks like I'm forgiving other people out there, coming up on the freeway, my husband, whatever. And, um, and, but really learning that it's all about um, uh, we're forgiving ourselves is the biggest challenge. And so when I'm seeming to be forgiving outside of myself, I'm, it's coming back to me. And then I start to experience more of that peace and more of that joy, the more that I forgive. And then I just do want to acknowledge my husband. Maybe it was when I was gripped in fear at one time. He kept saying, forgive the situation, forgive the situation. And I was like, what do you mean? I thought I had to forgive a person. And he taught me about forgiving the situation. I found a lot of power in that. So um, I'm just hoping maybe you guys could talk a little bit more about forgiveness. Yeah, that's a great question. Because it's, it's, we've come from, whether we came from Catholicism or whatever we came from in this world, usually when people talk about forgiveness, you're forgiving what people either did to you, uh, they sh they shouldn't have done, or they didn't do what they should have done. So there's it's a lot of forgiveness, and the Bible talks about forgive seventy times seven, implying that that you really have to you're aiming for something that will probably take practice in terms of linear time, and also this idea that that you forgive your brother for what he did not do to you that that's something none of us were ever taught. It's like, what? Say what? <laughs> what do you mean? You're supposed to, is this an ostrich uh, burying the head in the, in the sand? Uh, you know, is this the kind of forgiveness? And, but it's actually going into a, a, a healing in mind and a transformation. And it comes in flashes. I know for Armel, this, this burst of, it's all thoughts, you know, is a big part of it. Because as long as we see everything on the timeline, and we have these memories, uh, we were just talking at the break about uh, working with patients who get arrested in a traumatic memory, elderly people that just kind of relive the same traumatic memory over and over, like Groundhog Day, like a loop, just keeps looping around and around. For most people, they do have recurring patterns, whether they do past life regressions or whether they just look at this so-called lifetime, there's certain patterns that come back, but it's really helpful to start to see that those patterns are really thoughts and beliefs, not events on the timeline. So that idea of forgiving situations, uh, it's only the ego that thinks in situations. It's only the ego that thinks in terms of separate people. And at one point, I, I, the Holy Spirit said through me that, that situational thinking is the problem. Um, that we believe that there's these situations in our life and they have beginnings and endings. And yet from a higher perspective, it all just melts together in a simultaneous way. And yet we have to loosen from this linear way that we've been perceiving everything in. Because the ego invented past, present, and future on a timeline. It took me a while before I, I mean, I grew up in, my biological mother was a history teacher, and you know when we took history, the history teacher would draw on the chalkboard a long line, and they would put the little increments and put a little dot and say, this is the present, and go back into history, and then the future, the arrows. And all of us grew up believing that the present moment was in between the past and the future. Um, that's the way it seems. So finally I got into A Course in Miracles and Jesus said, no, that's not what the present is. It's not between the past and the future. That's pretty radical. <laughs> uh, you know, talk about assumptions. Like that's the most basic <laughs> assumption. Imagine putting the dot somewhere else. Uh, he said, uh, just like, all right, it's not between the past and the future. Then uh, tell me, uh, where is the present? He says, 
the present is before time was. So you have to look at the grammar. The present is before time was. Before Abraham was, I am. He was teaching it 2,000 years ago that we're going to find the present moment. We have to go at it a whole different way because as long as we try to do it from the old construct, we're always going to find that the present just seems to be this little ineffectual little blip. And what does forgiveness mean? You know, it happened before. How do we erase what happened? So that's very important because when we start to open truly to the present, we, we have to have a whole new way of thinking about time. And that's what the early workbook lessons are about. He even says in there, we need to introduce new time ideas. So, and that's at the early part of the workbook lessons. So Jesus is saying, <laughs> the fundamental nature of how you perceive things is all based on linear time. And the ego invented linear time to keep you guilty, and to keep you trapped, and say, oh, you've got a long and guilty past. The ego says, no doubt about that. Don't try to evade the, the, the guilty past. And the present moment that it invented between the past and the future is this little blip. The ego says, ah, you can't do much. It's such a tiny blip. You can't really, it's, it's ineffectual. You have no power. It's just going to, the past is just going to roll on over that blip into the future. You're guilty in the past, you're going to be guilty in the future, and you're condemned to death. And it's not surprising how Christians end up talking about hellfire and burning in hell, because linear time was constructed to keep alive hellfire. The idea that you're just condemned to eternal damnation, you know. And time seems to be a pretty tight vice on the deceived mind. So once we start to realize that, that the power of the present moment is the power of decision, it's also our power of trust that our Mel's been talking a lot about. That's, it's a decision in the present moment. And anything we are experiencing is just a decision in the present moment. And people say, what about karma? Isn't there things that we've done in the past, like in a karmic sense, that we have to undo? Well, John Lennon wrote the song, Instant Karma. And he was teaching us that we actually have the power of decision to release ourselves from all of the past and live in a, an eternal state of bliss. But we have to train our mind to do that. And really, we always are talking about the present moment. It's not something that happened in the past that's making you feel the way you are. It's just choosing to hold on to the ego and hold on to the past. It covers over the true present moment and keeps you in a delusion as if the same patterns seem to repeat like Groundhog Day. Phil keeps stepping in the pothole. He keeps putting his foot in the water until one day arrives when he's walking along and he starts to step in it and he goes and he hops over it. And as soon as he hops over it, then every day after that he's training his mind. He's aware of the hole and he doesn't step in. And that's kind of how it goes with us as well. Yeah, um, there's one thing coming to my mind uh, about instant karma. It always makes me, makes me smile when I hear that because truly um, separation is a present decision. It's not something that happens to you and that you're a victim of. It's really a decision that is made in the mind and it's a present decision. It's not like it happened 2,000 years ago, 5,000 years ago. It's in the moment. And so instant karma is the perfect way to describe what karma can be because what it would be is that when the decision is made to be separated in the moment, then there's a whole world that comes about. And therefore, karma exists in that moment, but it's instant because if you choose again and you choose to realign with the spirit, karma is gone. It was just an idea. It was just a thought. And I, I just have this, um, yeah, just this friend coming to my mind because I, I just worked closely with him for several weeks in last summer, last spring, and his story was there's something missing, something that. 
I didn't do in the past and I need to, to do it now. I need to, you know, kind of run and do it now to make sure that I'm not going to miss something and then I can accept the atonement. And that's always the story that's going on. It's like, there's something that I missed or that I messed up or I was wrong about or I did wrong and now I need to cope for that. And I need to, to um, pay somewhere to pay for that and once I would have paid my debt to the spirit then I can accept the atonement but it's just a story the thing is that any time you accept you, you choose separation instead of the spirit then the story of what you think you are the story of your life just comes about and for him it was there's something missing I missed something